we essentially just have to take all of these views, right? So they're they're all they're all just sitting there in our top view, and now I don't even need the other views. I'm just going to take this stuff. Um, we very simply just select the line work that we want to export out. We open it up in AutoCAD, and then we start laying it out, right? So um, the only other thing I'm going to show you here is wherever you've placed all of your views, select them. Then go to File, Export Selected. And in your folder structure somewhere, wherever you want to set it up, um, make sure that you're changing, <coughs> excuse me, make sure that you're changing uh, the type, the file type, to a DWG. So we're creating, did I already run through this with you guys, some of it? I wonder why I have a box elevations CAD file here. That's odd. There should be two sections, two plan, or one, two sections, one plan. Yeah, you can you, you can do them separately if you want. If you only have a few of them now. So anyway, um, I'm going to call this uh, box drawings. You can call it whatever you want. Um, yeah, so we're, we export, we make sure it's a DWG file, and you hit save. And that's all there is to it. Um, the export scheme, leave it on default. I think I showed you a little bit about this before. Leave it on default, hit OK. So now over in AutoCAD, all we have to do for this file is just open up that AutoCAD file. So you go to the big A in the top left corner, go to open, open a drawing, And then I go to the file that I just saved, which for me, I called it box drawings. You probably called it something else. And you hit open. <clears throat> It'll probably give you this error that it wasn't um, developed by a licensed Autodesk product or something like that. You can just continue. And this is what it will look like. Export selected. That's what you should be using. So, um, I didn't really go over very much with that. So, but I do want to make sure that I'm not losing any of, any of you before we move into any of the AutoCAD stuff because that's still relatively new. So, I'm going to take a quick sweep around, make sure we're all caught up. Rather, rather than I think, um, rather than I think focusing on the elevations, which are you know pretty cut and dry. Um, first, I want to show you guys the sections and plans first. So we'll start with the floor plan. Um, the floor plan is usually going to be your primary drawing in almost any architectural drawing set. Um, so this happens to be right here. We have currently um, two layers, right? So you notice now when you look at it that it borrowed your layer properties. It borrowed the color um, and the name. So if I click on this layer, it's under this silly name, Make 2D Visible Clip Planes. I'll change that, and I'll make it a different color. Uh, the other one is under the green object layer. Um, so let's open up our layer properties, which is right up there next to uh, the layer panel. Um, and so this is where we're going to kind of play around with things to make it a little bit more AutoCAD appropriate. Um, so I do want to take a quick sidebar, though. Um, because I am making a change based on my current background color. And so I want to show you the options menu where you can change that. If you prefer to work in a lighter color, like a gray or a tan. Um, so you type in options. And it will bring up a really, really, really big menu. Um, this has a ton of settings. If you spend enough time playing around with things, you could figure pretty much anything out. Um, but the one that I'm going to show you right now is to change the background. It's under the drafting tab. And under this little button, colors. So when you click on colors, 
you have all of these different settings here that you can play with. So um, for me, what I'm concerned with here is the 2D model space right here, uniform background. So uniform background right now is set to black. So I can change that to blue or green or whatever color I want. But usually you could leave it as black if you want. I'm giving this to you as an option if black like messes with your eyes. Um, so you want it to be something soft, like a really, really soft tan. Um, if you go into true color, you can make it uh, soft like that. It doesn't want to do it for me. That's a funny color. True color. There we go. So I oftentimes will work in like a very, very soft tan like that or a gray um, if it's bothering my eyes. But I think for the projector, black does very well. So I'll leave it black. And if you guys have trouble viewing it, let me know. We'll try and find a color that works. So that's for you. Um, so I need to change my layers. So I'm going to make it something that I can actually see very well. Um, the first thing that I'm going to change is make my objects red. So I'm going to go to the object layer and go to index color and make it red. And um, be aware that there is a reason I chose index color. It'll come into play a little bit later on. But uh, <clears throat> so I make it red and make 2D, which is my cut layer. Um, I'm going to make that blue. So I'm also going to change the name. So to change the name, I just click on the name twice and I'll call this one cut. So I've got object and cut, or you can name it background and cut. It's up to you. And then hidden. So hidden, I'm going to change to something like uh, cyan, something light. But again, it's up to you. <clears throat> All right. So that changed. You'll see that it changed all of our line work because it's already assigned to the layer. So now we're just managing. I hear a lot of clicking, so I'm going to pause for a sec and make sure we're getting caught up. <coughs> so, so here we go, guys. I'm going to try and uh, wrangle us all in real quick. Um, I can show you some other, you know, stuff that. You want to explore in between, but what I what I want to get you to, I think you've all got the layers down, right? For the most part, I saw you guys playing around with those. The layers are pretty simple. I've shown you it before. Um, we need to put this on a layout. Um, so when we do that, remember down here in the bottom left, layout tab. So let's click on layout one. What shows up? is a black box, or it should be black, um, it might not be, um, with all of our drawings currently in that view. So I'm going to quickly walk us through the setup of a drawing before we move on to actually formatting the views um, so that we're, we're sort of in line with, with what we want for this. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about title block or format or anything like that yet. I just want to show you... Uh, sort of a typical eight and a half by eleven setup with with uh, no border, just a drawing on it. Okay, and then we'll talk about scale. So um, to to modify the properties of a layout sheet, you right click on the tab. And then you go to the setting that says page setup manager. Right click on the tab down there, bottom left corner, and then go to Page Setup Manager. All right, um, so when you have multiple layouts that are formatted and everything, they'll all show up here, and you can modify those accordingly. But for us, we're going to go in to Modify Layout 1. Sure, yeah, to get there, if you missed it, go down there to the bottom left, Layout 1. Right click, go to Page Setup Manager, and then Modify. Yes? All right, hold on. 
Okay, so um, there's a fair bit to explain here. So you probably want to, you know, stop work for a second and look and take notes. Um, the the first and foremost thing that you should be aware of is that when you're printing out of a digital uh, software package, my thought is that you always, always want to print to PDF. Unless you have some very specific reason not to, print to PDF. And then also, when you go to actually physically print it onto an actual sheet, print it from a PDF. Don't print it from AutoCAD or don't print it from Adobe Photoshop. Um, so for us, the first setting we're concerned with here is the printer slash plotter. Um, that we're going to set to Adobe PDF. <clears throat> and just so that you're in the know and you know you're not confused by what a plotter is, uh, a plotter, if you look in the back corner of the room there, that really, really big thing by the door, that's a plotter. Um, it, it's for large format printing. So that's just a, a terminology, you know, design industry jargon type stuff. So Adobe PDF, when you click that, what's going to happen is it'll, it'll borrow all the properties. Um, you can modify those properties, but we're going to deal with standard sizes for now. So when you slide down uh, paper size here, it is pre-programmed with a not all, but most of your standard industry specified paper sizes. So for us, letter is eight and a half by 11. We have uh, 11 by 17, also known as tabloid. I don't know what the difference is between the 11 by 17 setting and the tabloid setting. Probably has to do with margins. Um, but uh, letter is eight and a half by 11. Tabloid is 11 by 17. Um, and we're not going to worry about the other stuff. What you do need to be aware of is that in the field of architecture, we have slightly different sizes than, say, graphic printers, um, where graphic printers would often use the ANSI page sizes, so ANSI A, B, C, and D, um, and E, and I guess F. I never used F before in my life. Um, but architecture has A, B, C, D, E, and then these oversized E1, E2, E3s. So your, back in the day, it used to be 24 by 36 was kind of your standard architectural drawing size, and that's your Arc D. Um, we, nowadays, a lot of people will use an E size, uh, 36 by 48, or a modified E1, which is uh, 30 by 42. I've seen a lot of people move into um, 30 by 42 these days. So that's just a heads up. You don't need to know that for this class. <clears throat> um, we're using letter right now. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, kind of just work my way around here counterclockwise. The plot area has a couple of different settings. Um, you can plot just what your computer screen sees. You can plot the extents of whatever the, the view or sheet has on it or you can plot just the layout itself so if you have like other stuff floating off the page it won't print it or you can set a window like this and say I only want to plot in that window <clears throat> I will say this a good industry standard is to use layout I know when if you guys like go out into an office somewhere and you find that they're using window that's a very common one too but uh, the reason layout was presented was because it was meant to be the industry standard. Window was sort of the, the old school way that people just kept doing. <clears throat> um, don't worry about plot offset. That's more of like a spacing on the plotter thing. Plot scale for us, we're going to be using one to one because we are scaling our drawings down to the correct size. Plot scale is used for if you have a 24 by 36 drawing in AutoCAD that you want to print down and retain your layout or your line weight sizes down to like an 11 by 17. So that's kind of what that's for. Um, but the one you do need to be aware of here is the plot style table. Plot style table, we're going to get into great detail about that in the future. 
but what you need to know for right now is that of all of these things that are set up here, what we're saying is that we want all of our lines to be black. Everything that's drawn is going to show up black, and that's on monochrome. <clears throat> and we're, we're going to get into all those settings, so I'm not even going to get into anything else about it right now. Um, shaded viewport options. This is a little bit more advanced, too. We'll talk about that when we actually do shaded viewports. Um, we won't need much of it. And plot options. The standard options are good for us at this stage. So object line weights, yes. Plot styles, yes. Paper space last, I don't think that really matters, but just leave it on. And then uh, drawing orientation. So drawing orientation, uh, typically in the field of architecture and uh, well, most technical fields, uh, landscape is going to be the way you do it. Graphic fields, you might find a lot more portrait, you know, for like movie posters and stuff like that. So if you click it, it just moves the orientation of that A. And I honestly have no idea why there's even a checkbox for plot upside down. That just seems like a silly thing conceptually. But I can imagine it's very applicable when you're doing like window cling details, uh, decals or something like that because they have to be printed backwards. Probably something like that. Um, so altogether, that's kind of like the overview of all the settings. Um, just a real brief preview, <coughs> um, review of it. The ones you need to be concerned are printer plotter, paper size, plot area, plot style, and orientation. Those are the big ones that you need to make sure that you look at every single time. Okay, so at that point, once you've got all those set up, you hit OK, you close it, and your sheet is ready to go. How are we doing on time? All right, so this is a longer video. What questions do you have at this point? Did you all follow along explicitly setting up the sheet? Okay. Did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I guess in the video, could you explain yep. the layering phase? Yeah, I'll come around. <laughs> 